Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we have a drawing of Rona Mitra, the English actress, in this provocative black dress. I used a combination of pencils for this. I'm going to talk about that a bit more during the video. So let's have a look at the drawing process. The size of the paper is going to be 9 times 12 inches. And like I said, I'm going to be using a combination of pencils. It's mostly going to be a combination of charcoal pencils and graphite pencils. And a bit of black colored pencil here and there as well. So I like to use uh, mixed media. Most of it is done in charcoal because uh, charcoal is easy to blend and it's easy to cover larger areas with it. But let me talk a little bit about what I'm doing. So I'm working on her hair and I mostly used a medium charcoal pencil for this. And I made sure that I uh, drew the hair by using one directional tapered strokes. And now I'm blending it with a brush. And the reason why uh, the type of stroke was so important is the, so that I could get that smooth uh, look of the hair because uh, even when you start blending with a brush some of that texture and some of those lines still remain so if I want the hair to flow naturally in its proper direction I need to make sure that my strokes match the direction uh, of the hair and so now I'm finishing the hair on the left and I'm also using a graphite pencil to add some flyaway hairs to make that edge of the hair uh, a little less uh, clear so these flyaway hairs will add a little bit more to the realism, to the realistic appearance of the hair. You can also see that I cleaned up the edges between the face and the shoulder and the hair. This is very important because we have to have a clean edge there. So now moving on to the eyes and the eyebrows and the eyelashes. And I'm using a black colored pencil for this because I don't want any smudging and I want clean uh, accurate lines and that's why I find that often a black colored pencil is more useful for these uh, smaller details than uh, than even a medium charcoal pencil. The charcoal pencils that I'm using are worse and woodless charcoal pencils they can be sharpened pretty well but like I said I like to complement them with some other types of pencils and it's usually a black colored pencil for the darker details where I need a little bit more precision and accuracy and a graphite pencil for the lighter shading. For the purists out there who only want to use one type of pencil or one type of media rather you can do the same thing in graphite or in charcoal it's just that I find this a little bit more convenient and I find that when you combine these different types of pencils it's easier to uh, get uh, to utilize the advantages of, of both of them anyway I'm shading the face and uh, she has a kind of a large prominent uh, forehead and a fairly strong jaw so those are some of the features that I'm going to have to keep in mind if I want to capture the likeness. I'm going to be doing two portraits of this actress and both of them are commissioned portraits. And the other one is going to be well not not larger but the face is going to be a little bit larger in the other one I think. This one um, is, uh, is her looking over her shoulder I kind of like the position of her body and the dress that she's wearing uh, and the hair looks pretty good here so that was an interesting challenge for me to draw. Here as you can see on the lips I'm trying to reserve those white spaces for the highlights on the lips so I'm kind of trying to work around them to leave those uh, white areas so that I wouldn't have to erase those, uh, those reflections on the lips later and I did the same thing on the eye. You can see how nicely the reflection in the eye stands out and that's because I left that white space. Uh, it's always better to reserve the white space rather than er erase it later. 
Now some people also like to use uh, gel pens and things like that or maybe even, even uh, gouache to bring back those highlights I uh, even though I'm not against using mixed media as you can see I don't really uh, like using those things uh, when I use a white gel pen I use it very very sparingly because uh, it usually doesn't combine well uh, with these pencils especially with graphite I have found that white gel pen usually looks pretty bad in real life when combined with graphite so these types of drawings usually look a lot better when they're scanned but in real life not so much uh, with charcoal I found that a white gel pen tends to combine a little bit better but you have to use it very very sparingly for some of the tiniest details you can't use it for larger uh, details like for example white hair or beard or things like that you have to use some other methods so now I'm tackling the right side of the face or her left side of the face and I'm starting with the eye here so she, she has a, a peculiar looking face uh, she has uh, some features of feminine beauty and at the same time um, uh, some, uh, some of her features are kind of a little bit more uh, rough and masculine because she, uh, like I said she has a bit of a strong jaw and he, she has uh, she has those uh, uh, strong uh, muscles around this uh, around the mouth uh, around the cheeks um, so like I said uh, those are some of the features to keep in mind because I am trying to capture the likeness at the same time she uh, I don't know how popular she was in the US and the rest of the world but like I said she is a British actress as far as I know I've seen her in a couple of movies um, the best known to me are the that series of movies about uh, vampires and werewolves I don't know exactly uh, what the name of the movie was I, I think it was one of the underworld movies but it may have had some other name so those were pretty good movies they weren't bad if you don't expect too much out of an action movie so I'm uh, finishing with the shading of the face but I'm adding a little bit more value using vine charcoal to the right side of the face because I felt like it it felt a little bit too flat and also I'm gonna be adding a little bit of uh, texture to the nose and to the uh, to the area around the nose and the cheekbones because I think she has some freckles she has a freckly skin around that area so I'm adding a little bit more texture in that area and also um, uh, I'm gonna need to add a few more uh, highlights here and there using a pencil eraser to emphasize those cheekbones beca because um, she has a very strong uh, st uh, bone structure um, but uh, as you can see I'm just uh, doing some fine shading I'm doing this with a combination of a black color pencil and a graphite pencil um, I did I, I also used charcoal so I'm combining these uh, different types of pencils to make a seamless transition between different types of pencils and then I'm going to be moving on to the here on the right uh, this portrait uh, is a little bit different uh, than the ones that I normally do because uh, I'm going to have to draw a little bit more of the body as well because she is uh, looking over her shoulder so uh, we're going to have to do a little bit more of her back and the shoulders and the, and the arm so that's an opportunity to practice uh, drawing anatomy a little bit anyway I'm shading the neck and I um, I'm first gonna do the overall shading to put down the the areas of, uh, larger areas of lighter and darker value and then I'm gonna put in these smaller details these uh, folds in the skin as she is turning to the side so I need to put those in as well um, 
but as you can see I'm still fidgeting a little bit uh, with the face here and there adding a little bit more value before I move on to the hair. In addition to the medium charcoal pencil I'm also going to be using a soft charcoal pencil for the darkest areas in the in the shadow areas of the hair where there is uh, where there isn't any light coming through. Her hair here is kind of dark brown but there are some highlight um, some reflections rather uh, because the hair looks kind of um, shiny and straight so I uh, what I'm doing is I'm um, covering the larger areas with uh, with charcoal and then I'm pushing the charcoal to towards the lighter areas and that way I create a nice seamless transition from the darker areas to the lighter areas another trick that I like to use is in addition to the charcoal pencil I use a little bit of vine charcoal and vine charcoal allows for smoother blending it allows me to create smoother transitions and also move that compressed charcoal from the charcoal pencils a little bit easier by the way what I just did here I added some even darker areas using a soft charcoal pencil and that's why and the hair got a little bit uh, darker near the top of the head and uh, at the bottom uh, near the back uh, where where the hair is in the shadow and here I'm just adding some more details to the hair kind of trying to uh, define its structure a little bit more and break it into segments and things like that and I also added a few more flyaway hairs on the right side as well to make the hair look more organic and natural, more realistic. Here I'm moving on to the breasts. Uh, uh, a part of them is visible through this um, small black dress and there's going to be a little bit of shadow here on the chest. Uh, this, uh, sh uh, this line of the arm on both sides needs to be very clean and defined so I can't have a blurry edge there so I'm gonna to have to shade it so that I have a clean edge between the arm and the, and the, uh, the breast and the chest uh, because uh, I want that area to be uh, I want a nice contrast so that um, so that the arm and the shoulder would really stand out and so that the viewer could feel like they are uh, in front of the rest of the torso uh, so I'm do doing a little bit more shading here on the right, on the chest, um, and now I'm moving on to the shoulder. As you can see, I've put down some of the main lines uh, on the on the back to signify where the where the shoulder blades and the back muscles are. And uh, the thing that's, that makes uh, things a little bit more complicated is because uh, both the skin and the muscles are kind of twisting because she's t t turning to the side. So I need to capture uh, those... Um, I, I need to try to capture that motion as well. I'm doing a little bit more shading on the arm because I felt that it needed to be a little bit smoother and a little bit darker. My, ca my camera doesn't capture all of the details. I think uh, the drawing is a little bit more detailed with a little more texture in real life. I don't really know how much of it it will be able to capture. Uh, I don't really have high-tech equipment, but uh, I'm mostly trying to focus on the drawing process and to try to tell you what I'm doing at the moment. So right now I'm shading the rest of the back and uh, the drawing is 95% done. I need to I need to blend everything a little bit more and integrate these darker lines where the skin folds are between the shoulder blades and the muscles on the back. I need to integrate them a little bit better so that we have so that I don't have these dangling uh, darker lines and uh, I'm just uh, doing a little bit more shading here and there just to make everything more even uh, to make the skin on the back uh, a little bit smoother and occasionally I'm also using uh, occasionally I also, I also used a uh, pencil eraser to bring out the highlights uh, on some far parts of, of the back which are kind of protruded and which are getting more light so I wasn't really sure where to sign it 
uh, and uh, I eventually decided to sign it uh, on the right because I just had a little bit more space there so the drawing is now finished and I hope you enjoy the drawing process like I said I'm gonna be doing another drawing of her thank you for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos I'll see you in the next one bye for now